Hallelujah. Well, go ahead and be seated. And uh, if you want, you can turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 25. And we've been talking for several weeks about this scripture in Matthew chapter 25, the story of the talents, where Jesus, Jesus begins to tell them a parable and he, or a story, and he says that uh, the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Matthew 25, 15, and unto one, so the, this, this man, this rich man, a very rich man, he's getting ready to take a trip, and in those days they didn't have jets, so if you took a real long tr a trip to far away, it was going to, far, far away, I guess I should say, if you were on a trip to far, far away, it was going to take you a while to get back, right? Because you couldn't just fly there and hop in a jet, fly back. No, it was going to be a months, maybe years long trip. And so he calls three of his top servants to him and he puts them in charge over everything that he has. And Jesus says he gave to one, he gave him five talents. Well, talent is in that day was an amount of money. Talent was an amount of money we could say he gave him just for the sake of saying $500,000. And he says, servant number one, here's $500,000. Invest that while I'm gone. And then he went to servant number two, and it says he gave him two talents. And we could say that's $200,000. Here's $200,000. While I'm on my trip, you invest that. And to servant number three, he says, here's $100,000. While I'm on my trip, you invest that. And the word talent is the word from which we get our word English, talent. You know, who knows what a talent is? Does anybody have any talents? You know, it's things that you're good at, right? You know, if you can sing, you're, it's a talent. If you can dance, you know, it's a talent. You know, if you can, uh, what, what's some other, shoot baskets, play basketball, whatever. Those are your talents. So the man went on his trip. He returned. And he calls up the first servant. He says, well, I, I left you $500,000. What'd you do with it? He said, I doubled it, master. I doubled it. Here's a million dollars. And uh, he says, wow, that's pretty good. He calls up the next guy. He says, I gave you $200,000. What'd you do with it, servant? He said, I doubled it for you. Here's $400,000. And finally, he calls up the, the last servant, the third servant. He says, I gave you $100,000. What'd you do with it, servant? And then we get to this scripture, which is kind of sad. Hallelujah. And the servant, Matthew chapter 25, verse 24, it says this, Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And, uh, you know, I, that's kind of a hard scripture to understand, but after thinking about it for about 20 years, I've come to the conclusion that what Jesus is saying there is, he's saying, uh, you are an extremely successful man. Everything you touch turns to gold. That's what the servant is saying. I knew how successful you are. I knew that all your investments, they return great profits, that you even reap where you haven't invested, that you even gather where you didn't straw. Can you see that? So that's the servant's attitude towards his, his master, his man. You are the top-notch success. You are Bill Gates. You are, what's the guy from, from Nebraska? You're Warren Buffett, you know what I mean? Anybody ever heard of Warren Buffett? He's like the second richest guy in America. You know, he's a great investor in all this. Warren Buffett. You're Warren Buffett. Everything you invest in increases. Can you see that? And so as a result of that, he says, verse 25, And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth, 
and lo, there thou hast, that is thine. In other words, he said, I, I took that $100,000 that you gave me, and I buried them in a hole. And what I like about the King James, it says, and there it is. <laughs> it's in the hole. You know, I left it in the hole for you. And uh, here I'm representing the hole with a grave, because the point I want you to see is that that's where most Christians bury their talents. That's where most people bury their talents. They bury them in the grave. And someday we're going to stand before Jesus and he's going to say, what did you do with those talents that I gave you? And we're going to say, well, they're buried there in the grave. I was afraid. Everybody say, I was afraid. I was afraid. Hallelujah. That's what the servant said. He said, I was afraid. Everybody say, I was afraid. Now, I just want to focus on that for just a second. And I want you to think about this. What was he afraid of? What was the servant afraid of? He says, Master, I knew that everything you touch turns to gold. And so I was afraid. What was he afraid of? He was afraid of failure. He was afraid of losing the money. He was afraid that he'd invest the money and he wouldn't earn anything. He'd lose it all. Can you see that? Can you understand that? So what did he do? Instead, he dug a hole and he buried it in there. Say, I was afraid. No, you've got to say it with more enthusiasm, please. Say, I was afraid. I was afraid. Hallelujah. And that's what most Christians' response is going to be to Jesus. I didn't do anything with the gifts you gave me because I was afraid. That's what most of us are going to respond to Jesus when he asks us, I gave you these talents, what did you do with them? He says, I, I buried them in the grave, Lord Jesus, because I was afraid. Everybody say, I was afraid. Hallelujah. So I've been talking to you for about two or three weeks about what is it that causes this fear. And uh, I've been approaching it from this standpoint. I've been talking about this lady who's a professor at... St what do I want you to do? I want you to be successful. I want you to be successful. Can you see that? You know, uh, some people, some churches, they measure their success by, by you know, uh, how many people get born again, which is, that's a good thing. Or they measure their success by, you know, how many people come to church. Or they measure their success by how big their building is. Or they measure their success by how much money they have. But our, we want to measure our success by you being successful. If you, don't become, if you come to church here and you don't grow, you don't become more prosperous, you don't become more successful, then we're not doing our job. We're not doing a good job. Can you see that? And you know, can, can I defend myself for a second here? Lots of times people are, are prospering and they're being successful and they're receiving increase, but they won't tell you guys. You know, they'll come up to me and Becky and they'll say, oh, well, you know, I got this big, huge raise and I got this big promotion and, oh, you know what God did for me. But they're, you know, people are embarrassed to talk about money things. And so they won't come up here and tell you what's happening in their lives. Or sometimes, you know, people get the promotion and they say, oh, well, it was all me. You know what I mean? You, you, uh, you, you, you know, before the promotion, they were all, God, please help me. You know, after they get the promotion, oh, yeah, that would have happened. You know what I'm saying? And so, so they don't come and tell, tell you necessarily. They, they pretty much they'll always tell me or Becky. But I, I don't like to get up and tell other people's testimonies. I want them to get up here and share with you. Because when they tell you what God did for them, then what you'll think like this. Well, if God did that for that guy, he'll sure do it for me. Do you know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So that's how we measure. I want you to be successful. Now, we began talking about, about this, about uh, Carol Dweck. She's a, a psychologist, and her whole study in psychology has been about why some people are successful and other people are not. That's what she studies. Why are some people successful and other people are not? And she's been doing this for about 30 or 40 years. She was a professor at Columbia University, which is one of the top universities in the country. And now she's a professor. She's actually a professor with a special 
chair. In other words, people gave money for this particular professorship, and she got it. That means she's a big deal. She's, she has a special chair in psychology at Stanford University. She's a big shot, is all I want you to see. And she recently came out with a book. It's called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. And it's based on her studies that she has done over the past 30 years of why some people are successful and other people are not. And it comes back to, I was afraid. And that's what I want you to see. Everybody say, I was afraid. Imagine yourself standing before Jesus, and he says to you, I gave you these talents, I gave you these gifts, I gave you this money. What did you do with it? I buried it in the grave, Jesus. Why did you do that? I was afraid. Everybody say, I was afraid. I was afraid. Hallelujah. And so, what she has discovered is this, is that, one of the main difference, the way she would put it, is the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is what she calls their mindset, their way of looking at the world. And she says there are two different types of mindsets that people have, and one is what she calls the fixed mindset. A fixed mind. Listen, listen to me for a second. For some of you. Uh, what we're talking about here is uncomfortable because it's going to identify you and it'll make you feel like, oh my God, what an idiot I've been. Do you see what I'm saying? But that's a good thing. You know what I mean? Because then you can change and then you can have the success. You can do the things that God wants you to have. So she says there's these two mindsets. One is the fixed mindset where a, a person basically believes that when they are born, they receive a certain amount of talent. They receive a certain amount of intelligence. Has anybody ever thought that? You know, some people are smarter than others. Well, I'm just not smart. You know, or I'm just not good at drawing. Has anybody ever thought that? I'm just not good at drawing. Am I the only one who ever thought everybody else in here can draw? Get their names down. Next time we need some work done. It says... <laughs> Has anybody ever thought, I, I can't draw? Has anybody ever thought, oh, I'm not good at music? You know, has anybody ever thought, I'm not good at dancing? Can you see that? That's a fixed mindset. You know, we, we look at Miss Kim, or no, well, I'll pick Miss Nitzia. Uh, since Jeff is not here, I can pick on her today. Uh, we, uh, we look at Miss Nitzia, and she can get up there, and she starts doing all that dan Latin dancing. You know, when they're practicing the Spanish songs up here, you should see her before the service. She's doing one of these numbers, you know, <laughs> and all that. She gets the maracas out, ch -ch -ch -ch, you know. She tries to play it all cool while you guys are here, you know. But we look at that, and we say, oh, she has a talent for dancing. And then we go to the dance, and we say, we, what do we say? We sit there on the wall, you know, and we say, oh, I, I can't dance. You know what I mean? I don't have the talent for dancing. Well, the fixed mindset believes that when they are born, they receive certain talents. They receive a certain level of intelligence. They receive a certain level of ability, and it's fixed. We could call it their IQ. Has anybody ever heard of IQ? Well, my IQ is 87. You know what I mean? Well, my IQ is 157. You know, well, if I have 157, that means I'm really smart. And if that person has an 87, woo, they're a real dummy. Can you see that? That's fixed thinking. Hallelujah. And she says the other type of thinking, the other type of mindset is what she calls growth. Growth people don't believe that they receive a certain level of intelligence, but they believe that their intelligence can be increased. Growth mindset people don't believe that they receive certain talents, but they believe that their talents can be developed. Can you see that? In other words, instead of thinking, I can't draw like a fixed mindset person, a growth mindset person says, I can learn to draw. Instead of, instead of thinking like a fixed mindset person, oh, I don't have an ear for music, a growth mindset person says, I can learn to 
hear music. And I, I told you who were here last Sunday, I said that my nephew just graduated from, you know, a pretty well-known uh, music school in Boston. It's called the Berkeley School of Music. And he went there to study jazz. And he was explaining to my mom that uh, one of the classes, they made them listen to notes until they could identify each note. You know, they would play the note. Is this thing on here? They would play that note. Does anybody know what that is? Oh. How about this? A? No. It's A flat, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I couldn't tell you what it was. I just knew where it was, more or less. But they, they make them study those notes, just like we study the alphabet. A. Oh, that's an A. You know, that's what Stevie will say. The other day he was driving down the street and they passed uh, Jack's there going, what direction is that? South? They passed Jack in the Box going south on Imperial and Stevie all of a sudden says, it says California's that way, Mom! <laughs> and Becky, that next day we were going for lunch and Stevie was with us and he says, I don't know what Stevie was thinking, but he said, California's that way, Mom. And, and she says, well, it can't. And she's told him, no, I can't be right, Stevie, because California, we're in California. And so I said, well, no, it's probably one of those highway signs. You know, California 86 with an arrow pointing that way. And so he read California that way. Can you see that? Now, he's learned to, how did he learn to do that? He learned to recognize the letters just like that. They turn, teach them to learn to recognize the notes. That's an A, that's an A flat, that's a C sharp, that's a D, that's an E, that's an F. Can you see that? No, all I want you to see is that's a growth mindset. Most people think to themselves, no, I either have musical ability or I don't. Most people, Carol Dweck tells the story of this one kids in one of her seminars. She'll go and do these tests with elementary school students to, to test out her theories and stuff. And, and she remembers one of her kids in particular. He was a bad student, you know, and she began explaining to him, no, your intelligence level can grow. You are not stupid. Your brain is like a muscle. If you will exercise it, your brain will increase. It will grow stronger. And she said that little kid looked at her and said, Said, you mean I don't have to be stupid? Hallelujah. And so that was what? When you say, I'm stupid, you know there are people who say, I'm stupid. They're operating in a fixed mindset. And you know there are people who say, I'm smart. Yeah. <laughs> well, some of us are. No. Uh, there, there are people who say, I'm smart. smart. That's also a fixed mindset. And what she has discovered is this, is that people with a growth mindset are much more likely to be successful in life than people with a fixed mindset. Hallelujah. So last week we went over what it means to have a fixed mindset. So let me just review it here real quick. Oh man, we're almost out of time. Review it here real quick. A fixed mindset as a result of thinking that your talents, your intelligence, your abilities are fixed. You can't grow them. You can't change them. You may think you're smart, or you may think you're stupid. You may think you're good at it, or you may think you're bad at it. But if you're fixed, all of these things will happen regardless. This is how you will approach life. Avoids challenges unless sure of the outcome. And so she did these things where she'd take the students who were good in math, you know, and they, she said, she puts it this way, we'd give them a fixed mindset by telling them, boy, you're smart, you're so smart. We do that to our kids. We give them a fix, you're so smart, you're so smart. And then they would give them a math problem that was harder than they were used to. And the kids that they had built them up with the fixed mindset, they'd look at those problems, oh, no, I don't want to do that. No, I, I don't want to take that. Why? They would avoid challenges because it was going to, if they failed, it was going to make them look stupid. And in fact, some of them, at the end of that test, she took some of the kids and she said, uh, write it, we're going to give this test to other schools. I want you to write a letter explaining to the other kids how this works. 
And so they did. And she said that 40%, these are good students. These are not gangsters. 40% of those elementary school students lied about the score that they got on the test because it was so important to them to be thought of as smart. Why? Because they have a fixed mindset. And if they're not smart, then that means they're fixed at stupid. Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But she would give the same thing to this little kid and she would build him up, instruct him for a couple weeks in a growth mindset, explaining to them intelligence is something that can be increased. Your brain can grow. She explained to them how the brain works and how as you learn things, the, the cells interact with each other and they grow and all this. And that's what we call being smart. And she'd build them up with that growth mindset and those same kids, they would take the test. Even if they did that, they'd say, I can figure it out. I can do it. So a, growth, a fixed mindset avoids challenges unless sure of the outcome. A fixed mindset will not get up at the dance and go out and dance. How does he do? <laughs> you know, everybody doesn't have my dancing ability. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's uh, Miss Nitzia up there like this. <laughs> okay. In other words, you go to the dance, you have a fixed mindset. I cannot learn to dance. I'm no good at dancing. You get out on the dance floor. What are you thinking? Everybody's going to think I'm an idiot. Everybody's going to think I'm stupid. Are you going to grow that way? Are you going to develop in your dancing that way? No, instead, what are you going to do? You're going to avoid challenges unless sure of the outcome. A fixed mindset always has an excuse for failure. It's always somebody else's fault. What fault? Why? Because, because, because if it's not somebody else's fault and you're fixed, that means you're fixed and stupid. Can you see that? If you failed and it's not somebody else's fault, it means you're no good. Can you see that? Does that make sense to you? Hallelujah. Always has an excuse for failure. Quick to take credit for success. Why? Why are they quick to take credit for success? Because that's what their whole life is. They, they're fixed. I want to know that my fixed is good. I want to know that I'm fixed at intelligent. I don't want to know I'm fixed at stupid. I want to know I'm fixed at talented. So they have to come to other people. Am I any good? Am I any good? Am I any good? I'm fixed. Hallelujah. The growth mindset says, well, I may not have done a good job this time. Or the growth mindset says, you know, and you'll hear athletes say this. Good athletes, they'll say, well, you know, I've been working real hard. I have this special program. That Who's the, the running back for the Chargers? Oh, yeah. They know that. Not one of them could name a scripture if I had. <laughs> no, I'm just... Lada What's his name? Ladanian? Tomlinson? LT. Okay, let's call him LT. He has that big mountain in his backyard where he goes and he runs up it. You know what? He's training. He's one of the top running backs in the NFL, and yet the whole summer he spends running up this mountain in the back of his house. Why? Because he wants to grow. He's not going based on, I am good. He's going based on, if I work hard enough, I will be the best. Can you see that? So quick to take credit for success. Fixed mindset. The smallest failure in life, the smallest failure is a life or death matter. The smallest mistake, everything that goes wrong is a testimony about who you are in the fixed mindset. If somebody says, oh, oh, your hair came out bad, they're saying you're stupid if you're, you have a fixed mindset. They're saying you're ugly if you have a fixed And the growth mindset says, well, I guess I better do it differently. Let me see. I'll work on my hair more. You know, I, I need to work on this hair. I need to get myself some of that Rogaine. You know what I mean? What are you laughing about? <laughs> Hallelujah. One, one of... Uh, one of uh, Belinda, you know, Belinda does Becky's hair now. And Miss Kim is retired. And one of Belinda's daughters says, does, does Miss Becky have extensions? 
Uh, she may not have extensions, but her hair wasn't that color when we first met. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. The smallest failure is a life for, for the fixed mindset. The fixed mindset needs constant validation. Why? Because they don't know if they're any good. All they know is they can't increase their talent. They can't increase their intelligence. They can't increase their ability. So they want to know if they're any good. So they're constantly coming to... Be Was it any good? Now, there's one thing is receiving feedback, but the other thing is, oh, tell me I'm okay. Tell me I'm okay. <laughs> can you see that? Okay, so the growth mindset, hallelujah, the growth mindset. This is the mindset you want to have if you want to be successful. This is the mindset you want, according to all that she studied, if you want to be successful in, in, in school, if you want to be successful in sports, if you want to be successful in business, this, if you want to be successful on your job, this is the mindset you need to have. So first off, success to the growth-minded person means doing your best to grow and improve. They're not so focused. A growth-minded person is not so focused on winning as they are in growing, in getting better, in developing. That's what's important to them. Haven't you ever heard any of these athletes? Now, here's Mr. ESPN Radio here, right here. Uh, Dan, haven't you ever heard any of these athletes say, you know, I actually love the practicing more than I do the games. You know, I love practicing tennis more than I love playing games. I love practicing my instrument more than I actually enjoy. That's a growth-minded person. They enjoy, John Wooden said, he said, you know, he said, I enjoy the practices as much as I enjoy the games. He liked to win. I mean, he won a million things. Hallelujah. But he enjoyed the growing. That's what was important to him. Not the winning. The fixed mindset is focused on the winning. Why? Because it tells them what level they're at. It tells them, am I stupid or am I smart? If I win, I'm smart. I'm good. If I lose, I'm stupid. The growth mindset wants to win, but they know that they're growing. They're increasing. Uh, who was the, the girl from UCLA who, you know, her sister-in-law was the one with the real long nails? Yes, Jackie joyner Kersey. Uh -huh. Jackie joyner Kersey said this. She says, you know, I'm not so concerned with winning or losing. She said, if I lose, I go back out to the track and I try and figure out what I did wrong. I try, he said, I want to improve. That's what my goal is. I'm getting better at what I do. For me, that's winning, getting better at what I do. And so Coach Wooden, has anybody ever heard of John Wooden? Nobody's heard of him anymore, huh? Just me and Kenny, Stephen, us old timers. You know, John Wooden was the coach at UCLA. Uh, he was the basketball coach at UCLA. And he started there in like 1949 or something. But between 1962 and 1975, they won 10 national championships in basketball. That means 10 out of 12 years, I think it was 10 out of 12 years, they won the national championship in basketball. That means like all the other teams were saying, are these guys ever going to lose? You, there was one stretch where they won 81 games in a row. They won 81 basketball games from one season to the next season to the next season. They didn't lose a game. Can you see that? Hallelujah. So he was a great coach. And this is his definition of success. This is, he would tell his players, he said, I don't care if you win. What I want is that you did your best. I want you to do your best to be the best player that you can be. So when you're out there tonight, if you can come back to me and say, I did my best, then we'll win. He even said this. He said, there are some games that I appreciate more than the ones where we won the national championship. There are games where I felt we reached as close to perfection as we could. And they weren't national, they were just normal games. He says, and those are my favorite games. 
where they reached the, the maximum that they were able to do. So he says this, success is peace of mind that is the direct result of self-satisfaction. See, the fixed mindset never has peace of mind. They never have peace of mind because everything in life is a test of whether they're any good or not. Can you see that? Everything in life is a test of whether they're any good or not. So they're never satisfied. They never have self-satisfaction. They never have peace of mind. They're always frustrated because they never arrive. Hallelujah. I mean, even if they're successful, like John McEnroe is an example she uses of a fixed mindset athlete. Even he was successful, but he was always frustrated. He was always upset. He was always angry. He was never satisfied. Wooden said this, success is peace of mind that is the direct result of self-satisfaction in knowing that you did your best to become the best you are capable of becoming. A fixed mindset person does, isn't interested in that. All a fixed mindset person wants is the trophy. They want the ribbon. They want the victory. They want the success. They're not interested. If they could get the success without any effort, that would be even better. Can you see that? Hallelujah. A growth mindset person, to them a success means doing your best to grow and improve, sees failure as feedback. A, a person with a growth mindset, when they lose, and they lose, Everybody loses. When they lose, they don't get all upset and say, I'm nothing. They say, I lost. I need to work on that part of my game. I didn't get the promotion. I need to figure out what to do to get that promotion. I didn't make that sale. I need to figure out what to do to make a sale. Can you see that? So look at here what Michael Jordan says. I missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Fixed mindset people, they don't want failure. So as a result, they don't try. Can you see that? They won't take chances. They won't take risks. Failure to them is a testimony of who they are, not of what they've done. To Michael Jordan, all failure said is, I need to work on my three-point shot. To Michael Jordan, failure said, I'm getting too old to get inside with these youngsters. I better move on outside. To Michael Jordan, failure said, I need to work on my defense. I need to work on my defense. Can you see that? I've failed over and over and over again in my life. That is why I succeed. See, that is the mindset that real business people have. They're not concerned with success. They're concerned with trying that business, growing it up, and if it fails, they don't say, oh my God, I'm nothing. They say, okay, next business. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Can you see that? Uh, a growth mindset person, uh, success means doing your best to grow and improve, sees failure as feedback, takes responsibility for the outcome takes responsibility for the outcome. Hallelujah. And this is the example I want to give you of that. Prayer is like growing a garden. You know that Christians do not like to take responsibility for the outcome of prayer? If their prayers are not answered, they come up with a billion excuses why it was really God's will. Can you see that? But prayer requires effort. Most Christians want prayer to be a slot machine. That's how they think about it. That's the fixed mindset. I put my coin in there. I pull the slot. I guess God doesn't love me. 
I guess, and then they put in another prayer. Pull the slot machine. I guess God must not want me to have that. They don't take responsibility for the outcome. Let me tell you something here. You know, people will get mad at you. Fixed mindset people will get mad at you when you tell them the truth. You tell them, your prayer was not answered because you have not done what is necessary for your prayer to be answered. Jesus said, ask and it shall be given unto you. Either Jesus was a liar or you have not done what is necessary to receive the answer to prayer. Hallelujah. Prayer is growing a garden. How many of you would like to have in the back of your yard this garden? Hallelujah. You know that garden didn't just pop up out of the ground because God loves those people? Do you know what I mean? I mean, I wish it would. I keep looking in my backyard and saying, when is Becky going to get out there and do something about this? <laughs> Hallelujah. Prayer re gardens require effort. Answered prayer requires effort. Listen, if you didn't receive your healing, I mean, people get mad at us all the time. You didn't receive your healing? You know, the first thing I want to say to them is, um, well, what scriptures are you meditating on? Scriptures? You know those little cards we hand out with all the healing scriptures? Do you have one of those? Yeah, I, got, I had one. I know it's around here. Martha! Where's the scripture card? And then, well, how many times did you meditate on those yesterday? Well, I did it last year. Does that count? No, that doesn't count. Hallelujah. A growth mindset takes responsibility for the outcome. You know, when I don't receive healing, I don't say God doesn't love me. I wish I could, but I say, well, I need to get down and get serious about this. Get into the Word of God. Hallelujah. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Okay, the growth mindset. Success means doing your best to grow and improve. Sees failure as feedback. Takes responsibility for the outcome. Understands that growth takes time. Understands that growth takes time. Hallelujah. You know, uh, since we've been in karate, this is Jeremiah getting his black belt in karate. Since we've been in karate, there have been many people who have come and gone. All of them wanted a black belt. And if you gave out black belts at the first class, everybody would be there in karate. I have known people, you know, in our style of karate, we start out with a white belt, then a yellow belt, then an orange belt, then a blue belt, then a green with a white stripe, then a green, then three browns. Brown level three, brown level two, brown level one. I know people who quit karate at brown level one. The next thing was black belt, and they quit. Hallelujah. Growth takes time. Growth takes time. Growth takes time. Fixed mindset people aren't interested in growth. They're interested in the thing. They're interested in the black belt. They don't care if they know anything about karate. They want to be able to say, I got a black belt. Do you know what I'm saying? But growth takes time. We've had our black, Jeremiah and I have had our black belts for a year little over a year, about a year and a few months, and I know more about karate, a lot more about karate now than I did a year ago. It's incredible to me sometimes. I, I just, it amazes, oh, is that what they meant? Oh, oh, we're supposed to do that? I'm a black belt! Hallelujah. It's the growth that matters, and it takes time. I like to say about karate, you don't arrive until you've got a fifth degree black belt. Then you know something. Black belt just means you're qualified to learn. That's all it means. Growth takes time. Hallelujah. A growth mindset. I want you to be successful. A growth mindset. Success means doing your best to grow and improve. Growth mindset sees failure as feedback. Growth mindset takes responsibility for the outcome. Growth mindset understands that growth takes time. And a growth mindset likes taking up new challenges. Which brings us back to where we started. I was afraid. I was afraid. I was afraid. I was afraid. If you're afraid to go back to school, 
You're burying your talent in the ground. You need to change your fixed mindset. You need to change that idea of, oh, well, I'm no good at these kind of things. I'm no good at those kind of things. I'm not smart enough. I'm not talented at this. And you need to begin to say, no, I can grow. I can learn this. I can develop in this. You want to try out for a, a sports team. And you go and try out for the soccer team. And they say to you, uh, I'm sorry, you know, we have no need of your services this year. Thank you very much. Go home. And, and you have two choices. If you're a fixed mindset person, you will say, I guess I'm no good. And your parents will come along if they're fixed mindset people. And they'll, well, that coach must just not love you. Well, that wasn't fair. And they'll go and yell at the coach. Why, you evil coach? How dare you say that? Obviously, my child is the best in the world. No, but if you're a growth mindset person, you say, well, you better get out there and work on your soccer game. You better get out there and work on running. You better get out there and work on kicking that ball. That's what happened to Michael Jordan. They cut him from the varsity basketball team when he was a, a junior in high school. They cut Michael Jordan, or sophomore, one of those. They cut Michael Jordan from the basketball team. Michael Jordan! They cut him. He went home, and his mom said, Well, if you want to play, you better get out there and get to work. So he went out and got to work. What is that? Is that fixed mindset? He didn't go back to the coach and say, well, I'm Michael Jordan. Didn't you know that? No, he said, okay, I better get to work. And that's what he did his whole career. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Say, I will never be afraid. I will never be afraid. The, the good news is you can change your mindset. You can change your mindset. And that's what we're going to talk about next week is changing your mindset. Okay. Everybody bow your head and close your eyes and uh, we're going to pray. Did anybody get anything out of that? Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. While well, everybody has their head bowed and eyes closed, I want to give you...